Can you combine multiple XLR cables? Okay, that's a good question. It comes from Brian in Patterson, California. And Brian writes, I've seen it done in studios occasionally where someone will combine multiple XLR cables to reach a microphone, preamp, uh, digital audio tape deck, etc. I've heard multiple answers on this and would love to hear your take. Thanks. Brian, huge fan of PS Audio. Yes, thank you. You are officially part of the PS Audio family. So thank you, Brian. Uh, the short answer, yes, you can. You can take, here's an XLR cable. And XLR cables have two specific ends. You can see them. One is a female and one is a male. The male has little gozadas. Yeah, I won't say it. And the female has little gozintas, right? And so, just like human reproduction, boink, works. Now, if you want to combine those, no problem. Just take those two, and now we have twice the length. Okay. The bigger question, of course, comes down to, is it sonically acceptable? And I'll get to that in a second, but I wanted to just cover, just, just kind of briefly, and, and we've been over this before, but if you don't remember, an XLR cable is a balanced cable. Balanced cables are better sonically and for noise and any number of other reasons than single-ended cables. You know, the RCA, do I have one here? I don't think I have an RCA cable here, but you know, the standard plug it in, you got, you know, the, the little gazata and then the little shield on the outside. That's a single-ended cable, and it is not as good as a balanced cable. So in my systems and in my setups, whether it's in Music Room 1, 2, or 3, everything is balanced, always. I like balanced cables because I think they sound better. They certainly have lower noise, and you get a little bit more, a 6 dB boost from using them as opposed to a single-ended cable. And one of the reasons that balanced cables are so good is because of the very construction and the nature of how they're built. They're balanced. And what does that mean? It means that inside there are three wires, a, a ground, which is the outer shield, and then two wires a, in an, a, a hot and, a, and a, a, a cold, okay, which isn't really very accurate. So let's think of it a different way. There's two signal wires. On one, which is the non-inverting, as the signal is going up, it's following that exact pattern of up, down, up, down. And the other one is doing the exact opposite. When this one is going up, this one is going down. Okay? So the signals are opposing each other. They're going like this. They're going, one's going up, the other's going down. Why do we care about that? We care about that because, well, for a number of reasons, but that difference signal is very useful to us. For one thing, years ago, all these cables were designed to go into transformers. Transformers like it when we drive them differentially, so the coil can push and pull and go back and forth like that. Um, we, like, we have electronic equivalents of transformers for our input and output stage on, on balanced connections. But the reason we like a balanced connection is because of something called common mode rejection, which means anything in common is rejected. Okay, so if you take this cable, I just explained we have two wires in here, and each wire has uh, the opposite signal, the same, same music, but each of them going in a different direction. If something in common, like radiation from a transformer or cell phone radiation, and anything that comes into this and hits both wires at the same time, which it would if, if we had this, you know, if this was radiating and it, it would hit both of these wires pretty much at the same time. The circuitry in our devices will ignore anything in common and only amplify differences. And while one's going up, the other's going down, we have a difference. I mean, 180 degrees different, right? It couldn't get any more different. One's going up, the other's going down. So those differences are amplified, 
everything in common is ignored, all the noise goes away, life is good. So, yes, we like balanced cables. Now, if you put them together and you make a longer cable, is that bad sonically? Well, it's not the purest way to do it, but I do it all the time. And I don't really notice any big differences. So you certainly have, for whatever that's worth, you have my blessing. Go for it. I mean, always, if you can, use an appropriate length XLR cable. And if you can't, feel free to click it together. In the IRS 5 room, the main feed has two lengths of cable. Click together with XLR, and it sounds Great. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you tomorrow.